Hello everyone, my name is Michelle, and I have put together an extensive guide on breeding and stacking stat mutations in ARK Survival Ascended. Before we begin, here's a list of all timestamps of information that I will address. Use these timestamps to skip to any information that you may need. This breeding guide will be lengthy since I will be covering everything from the basics on how to breed dinos for mutations, to what stack calculators to download and use, and even covering negative mutations. I advise everybody to watch this in full length since I will address all types of breeding scenarios for beginners to more advanced breeders in this game and even covering topics for official to unofficial servers. This guide will be similarly formatted to my previous video on ASE, except this one will cover way more information. Also, a few key reminders to all of you who are watching this. I want to point out that at the time of recording, the island is the only official map out, meaning that the egg incubator and mutagen are not yet introduced into the game, therefore I will not be showing those. There are also plenty of mods out there that make breeding so much easier, especially for anyone that is on single player or for those that are renting their own server, but for the purpose of this, I have no mods installed. Also, check the description below for a link to my Discord in case if you need to ask me any questions on breeding, or if there are any updates to this, I will make sure to put it down below in the description. Thank you. Let's get started. First things first, you need to pick your dino that you're breeding. Certain dinos have a gestation, like an otter or a basslo, and other dinos like rexes, fairies, and udies, those all lay eggs. If you have a dino that lays eggs, then you might want to invest in taming an oviraptor for your breeding setup. You see, if you tame an oviraptor and access the radial wheel, you can have it collect fertilized eggs. The more points that you put into your oviraptor in its melee damage, the bigger the range for that oviraptor to pick up eggs in an area, which is really helpful. Now it's time to tame your dinosaur of choice. All dinosaurs in Ark Survival Ascendant are useful in many different ways, and I could talk about the usefulness of different types of dinosaurs, but that's really a separate video. and. There are arguments to be had for everybody, but it really just comes down to your playstyle. But for the purpose of this breeding video, I will be focusing and working with the Rex, arguably Ark's most iconic dinosaur. It's a decent mount. Because I'm playing on the island, Ark does favor lower levels for all dinosaurs. We have a rule in my tribe to tame all level 135 and above. Because of this, I will be working with these three Rexes that I have all knocked out and tamed. And I just want to point out the higher the level of the dino, the better the stat distribution of points that you could possibly get here. So that's why we work with 135 and above. Now for this next step, I highly recommend to all people who play on PC to download this app called Arc Smart Breeder. I am putting a link in the description below. If you play on PC, you need this app, especially if you are a person who breeds. Pretty much every single person that I know that plays on official, they use this app when they breed. This is the stack calculator that people used to use back on Arc Survival Evolved. I will put out an entirely separate video on how to set it up, how to download it, and how to use this app since it can be really confusing. Now, if you are on Xbox and PlayStation, you can technically still download this as long as you have a PC at home, but you will have to manually input all of the stat information. So once you have tamed all of your dinos and you brought them back to your base, you need to name them accordingly. Now, I would recommend to everyone to not level your dino if you can help it. The stats of the creature when you tame them are pure meaning that if you put a point into your dino, it will not carry over to the baby. So I recommend that you take a screenshot so that you always have the original stats on record. So here I have tamed three high level Rexes. Each one was above 135. I have one male on the left and two females on the right. Let's look at my male Rex first. You'll notice that his name is O-X-F-D-W-E-M-E, -E, which stands for Oxygen, Food, Weight, and Melee. I then have a female called Health and a female called Stamina. Why are they called that? Because that is their highest stat. Let me show you with the male, for example. Let's look at him. Let's look at melee damage, because he definitely pulled the higher melee. His melee damage without leveling is 372.7. So let's compare him to all the females that I have. Hers is only 290.4, 
and hers is only 343.3. So yeah, his is definitely the highest, which is why I called him that. Let's take a stat though, where we know he got lower in, just to show you what I'm talking about. Let's take his health. His health is only at 9,020. Her health, which is the highest, is at 9,680. And then her health is only 9,460. So now what you need to do is you need to breed them together to get the highest stats possible onto a baby. But I have three Rexes here. So I'm going to take this one at a time. I'm going to start with the male and I'm going to start with one of the females. I'm going to start with the health female. I'm going to bring her forward. You want to make sure that you have an oviraptor nearby. Make sure that it's on fertilized egg pickup. And then go up to your male, behavior, enable mating. Go up to your female, behavior, enable mating. And you know that they're mating when you see the little red hearts pumping above their name. You need to wait a while because the oviraptor will collect the eggs for you. It'll pick them up. You realistically need to pick up many eggs, at least, at least a dozen, I would say maybe even two dozen. It really depends on how many stats you're trying to pull together. But because I'm pulling health from her and I'm pulling oxygen, food, weight, and melee from him, this might take a little bit. So stand around and wait for eggs to collect up. So once your oviraptor has collected plenty of eggs, it is time to grab them and take the eggs to your incubation location. But before we go, just always remember the parents of your dino and keep them close by so that when this baby does hatch, we have something to compare to. This stage in this process is called, or what I would consider, getting your step dino, but technically, yes, you are working towards getting your base. The reason why I call it a step is because I have my two parents breeding over here, but remember off to the side, I still have my other female that will need to breed in later. But first, let me show you my incubation chamber. This is pretty large, and the reason for that is because I tend to do a lot of breeding, and I'll breed different dinos together, but for the purpose of this, I'll just be showing you the Rex, of course. Over here, I have a high-level Thyla to help me get rid of any unnecessary and unwanted dinos that I need to delete. The floor underneath of it, I have my air cons, and I have them spread out all throughout the floor. I'll go ahead and pick up this just to show you what it looks like underneath. So this is the place where I'll be hatching the eggs. I'm just going to go ahead and put that back there. But eventually I'll need to set up my Rexes for breeding and I do a separate area for that and that's right here what I'm looking at. But I'll show you this once we get our base dinos. But the, that's where I will be breeding all of my base females eventually. Let's go back inside of here. And let's get ready to toss out some eggs. So now go into your inventory and O out Rex eggs. You'll notice that I am only throwing out two at a time and that's because of how large they are. If you actually throw out all of them into one singular pile, the babies will hatch and they will cram into the same spot. They'll do like entity cramming and it's not good. You'll notice as well that when you look at the egg over top of the air con, it has egg incubation and that's going down. When that number reaches zero, that means your egg will hatch. So be ready and nearby when the egg reaches zero so that you can claim your dino. Now that they have hatched, look at all of your baby dinos and without using a stat calculator, this is how I do it. I tend to look for the highest level that pops out of all the eggs. The higher the level means that the more likely it is that it pulled all of the stats. So look out for the highest level that you can possibly find. Here I have a level 227. When I claim this baby, the first thing that I check is the gender, which is a female. Then I start looking at all of the stats and I start with health. You must remember where this baby comes from, the original parents. So the father, Rex, remember had the oxygen, weight, and food, and also the melee stat. And then the mother had the health. So if I compare these stats to the original, then let's start with the health. It did pull the higher health. You can skip on stamina because neither of the parents had the higher stamina to begin with. We can go down to oxygen. It looks like it pulled the higher oxygen. It pulled the higher food. 
weight is also good and the melee damage is good as well. So then the next thing that you need to do is you need to check ancestors and the biggest thing that you have to look for is underneath of where it says matrilineal and patrilineal. It must say zero out of 20 on both sides because this is a step dino, meaning that it's very close to becoming the base. We just need to take this female now and we need to bring in the stamina stat. Some of you may have noticed this, but I just wanna highlight that if you look at my baby dino here, did anybody else catch the melee damage? So she has 372.8, but the father Rex had 372.7. This can sometimes happen, just as a heads up, if this does happen to you, it's not broken, this is actually correct, and it all comes down to taming effectiveness. Melee damage is the only stat that you will notice that this gets affected in, so don't worry about it if it happens to you. If it's off by 0.1 or 0.2, percent, you're fine, but I just wanted to point this out because this did happen to me here. While this is in the baby stage, make sure that you put raw meat inside of the inventory of the Rex. We will let the female step grow up, but in the meantime, we need to take the only male that we have and walk him over to the other female Rex that has the high stamina. We have not bred with her yet. We need to put the male and the female on enable mating. You need to let as many eggs pile up for this. Now, in order for this to work, you must get some eggs from these two to hatch. And for this to work, the baby that we get from here must be a male. And the reason for that is because it needs to breed with that female step that is raising up on the side. Once you have collected up plenty of eggs, go ahead and pick them up and take them back to your incubation place. And we're going to place them down, allow them to incubate, and let's see what we get here. Again, I would highly recommend for you to walk through all of your dinos and keep track of the highest level possible. So when you're walking through, you might notice, like I have towards the end here, that there's a pink one. That means it has a mutation. I'm not even going to bother with it because I'm trying not to get a mutation. And you shouldn't be either because we're trying to get a step dino here. So let's just check the highest level possible first. And my highest level happens to be this level 231. Thankfully, it is a male, so this potentially can work here. I immediately check the ancestry at the bottom, and it looks like I don't have any mutations on either side, so this is good so far. But let's look at the stats together. So again, I will overlay the parents on either side so that we can see and compare with what we are working with. Firstly, I need you to ignore the health since both of the parents do not have the highest health to begin with. It did pull the higher stamina from the mother, it pulled the higher oxygen from the father, but food, it did not actually pull the higher food. But I will come back to this in just a moment. It did pull the higher weight stat, and melee damage is the best stat out of the parents. Now you might think that this is useless because it did not pull the higher food, but you need to go and check the female step dino that we had raising up on the side. Here I am bringing over that baby male Rex that hatched out and I'm going to walk it closer to my step female so that I can compare the stats and see if this will be useful. Firstly, I just want to show you once more the step female stats. Now let's compare her to the new Rex that hatched out. Here let's compare these two Rex's stats. My male has low health, but the female health is better. The male pulled the better stamina but the female doesn't have it. Both have the same high oxygen. The male has lower food while the female has higher food. Both of these have the exact same weight and they both have the exact same high melee. So we can actually use this male. The female has stats that he is missing and vice versa. So both of these need to finish maturing because we can use both of these and then we can go from there. Both dinos have finally matured. These two will need to breed together and the baby that does come from these two parents will be our base but it has to pull every single one of the good stats between the pair. Take all of your fertilized eggs and owe oh them out in your incubation area. Once they've started to hatch, Go around and look at all of them and 
find your highest level possible. Here I have a dino that is level 234. And let's go ahead and claim it. The first thing I notice is that it's a male, so now I'm going to check the ancestries. And it appears that there are no mutations underneath a patrilineal, and there are none underneath a matrilineal. So this is good. So now let's compare the stats to its parents. The health on this baby male Rex is the best since it pulled from the female. The stamina is the highest stat possible as it pulled from the father. The oxygen is the highest on both parents, so it has the same stat. The food came from the mother's higher stat, and the weight and the melee damage are both the highest stats possible. So this is perfect. With no mutations and all of the highest stats possible that you can get, this is your base male. So name it base male. Here is another 234. When I claim it, I notice it's a female. I'm going to check the ancestries, and there are no mutations at all, which is good. She also has the same stats as the base male, which is perfect. She is our base female. Base dinos cannot have mutations at all. And luckily, I was able to find another 234 just here, and this one also happens to be a female. As you breed, you will realize that you will go through hundreds and hundreds of unnecessary dinos, and it's a really good idea to make sure that you have something that can delete them quickly. Here I'm using a Thyla that has a lot of melee damage. A Baryonyx works really well, but have something that will help you get rid of unnecessary dinos. As soon as you can, make sure that you have raw meat ready to put into the inventory of the baby dino. In ARC, they can only eat from a trough once they are in the juvenile, adolescent, or the adult stage, so it's a really good idea to have a stockpile of meat or berries ready to go for whatever dino that it is that you're breeding. I'm also going to address this now. The more base female dinos that you have, the more eggs that get laid, which means that you have many more chances of getting mutations. Therefore, I advise you to get as much as you can handle. And just as a heads up, if you already have one base male and one base female like I have here, you can breed them together and you can get your ton more base females by breeding these two together. You just need to make sure that they are the exact same level and you always want to check the ancestry and make sure that your bases have zero mutations. It's very important that you follow that step. This is how I am setting up my Rexes for this demonstration. I have a total of 17 base females, all the same level, that I could fit comfortably on a two-story tall structure. And you will notice a double wide ramp, which is where you will allow your male Rex to walk up to reach all of the females to mate with. I have two oviraptors below for egg collection. One oviraptor is actually enough, but I went with an extra just to have as a backup. Make sure that both are on fertilized egg collection. You'll notice I can walk comfortably around on the bottom layer, and at the back of the wall, I have some feeding troughs for all my Rexes. And you can tell that I went three walls high and one half wall high to get the height of this structure. When you are ready to start breeding, hop on top of your base male and get him as close as you can to all of your base females. The closer that he is, the more likely it is for him to be able to mate with them all. Go to behavior, enable mating, and I like to just copy the settings to all nearby Rexes. This will make it a lot easier rather than going up to each individual female and turning it on mating. This makes it so much easier. And what I'm looking for here is making sure that all females are breeding. As long as he is able to reach all of the females, then I'm fine and I'll have a lot of eggs collecting up. And you'll notice that he is even able to reach all of the females underneath of him. So we're basically good. Now all we have to do is wait and let the oviraptor do its job, which is to pick up the fertilized eggs. So I'm going to wait around for a while, I'm going to allow a lot of eggs to collect up, and then we can start hatching for some mutations. My oviraptor has piled up plenty of eggs here, so now it's time to hatch these out, and I would recommend that if you can help it to have some high weight on your character to carry these eggs because they can be very heavy. Uh, let's take these to the incubator. And you will notice that when I go to put these out, I'm putting them in a row. And this is going to be helpful for later because as they start hatching, 
it's so much more convenient to be able to put them in a row so that I can walk up and down the aisle of baby dinos to check their levels. And now they are starting to hatch, so we can immediately go and start checking their levels. So I just want to point out to everybody that when you are breeding your base male with your base female, you will notice that for the vast majority of them, they will be the exact same level as your base. So that one's two, three, four, and if I compare it over there to my female bases, yep, two, three, four. So I can tell you right now that we need to look for a different level. Um, basically, I'm gonna tell you this, you wanna look for two levels higher than your base. So I would need to be looking for two, three, six. So I have my camera tilted up to make this so much easier to read the names of the dinos and you can see why I've spaced them out and put them in a row so I can literally just walk up and down but so far I'm not seeing anything I don't see any level other than two three four and this can sometimes happen I want to point out that mutations can take a while and it's all down to RNG random number generation. You're not always guaranteed a mutation and it can sometimes take a while so just be patient. But remember that you will have a lot of dinos so you are going to need to delete any unnecessary ones that you don't need. So make sure that you have something to be able to, to do that for you. Here is what it will look like when you do get your first mutation. My eggs are starting to hatch, so it's time to check, and right there immediately, there is the level 236. I'm gonna access the inventory. I notice immediately that it is a male, and if I compare this male to my base male that's outside, I can immediately look at every single one of the stats, but there's one in particular that's different and it's melee damage. So this is a melee damage mutation. It happens to be on a male, which is perfect. You want your mutations to be on a male if you can help it. Check your ancestors while you're at it and you will notice that there is my one out of 20 right there because that's my first mutation. You can actually read all of your ancestry if you want. It's up to you entirely. But you'll notice it has a patrilineal on the right and a matrilineal on the left. The matrilineal just means that I got the mutation from the mother. It does not matter what side it's on. But that is my first mutation in melee damage. So this is amazing. Make sure that you immediately change the name of this dino so that you have it on record. I'm going to call mine Melee 1. And then I'm also going to call it a male because it is a male and hit accept. And the first thing that you want to do is you need to make sure that you have some raw meat and you put it in the inventory because remember baby dinos must have the food directly in their inventory. Here I'm just cryoing up my melee and I'm going to move him outside to grow up to make it a little bit easier just so that way he doesn't get stuck inside of that building there. And I'm going to chuck them out over here, kind of near the troughs. This is like the area that I'm going to use to raise up. I'll put the raw meat inside, but now your job is to, well, just wait. We need to use this melee male rex in order for us to get our next mutation. Because in ARC, the way that breeding works, you always want to have your females stay the same. The only thing that will ever change are your males. So the male dinos, you will notice they always get changed out. My melee one Rex has finally grown up. So now it's time to take him and breed him with all of the base females. I went ahead and took my base male and I backed him up down the ramp and I walked him over here. It is very important that you take your base male and you move him to the side because there is a chance that you could use him later. So make sure to keep him out and somewhat nearby because you will be using him at some point as you're breeding. Let's take him, melee one, and we're gonna walk this up the ramp. We're gonna put it towards the center where all the females are at. We're gonna make sure we turn him on mating and the females should already be on mating, which they are. So now all we need to do is wait for eggs. So I'll let the oviraptor collect up as many as it can and then we can start hatching out this batch. The oviraptors have definitely collected plenty of eggs, so let's actually pick up a lot of these and bring them over to incubation. So I wanna point this out right now. 
is that melee number one, his level is 236, and my beast females are 234. So this is where things get a little bit different. So I can tell you right now that every single time that you get a mutation, the number needs to always increase by two and it always increases from the male if you're doing it the same way that I am. So what does that mean? Well, he, his level is 236, so the baby that I need to look for specifically here is going to be a level 238. So let me take these eggs and I'm gonna owe them out the same way I have been in a line. I'm gonna let them incubate and we will check the levels of these. And again, the male was level 236, so the baby that I'm looking for here is 238. There's a level 238 right here. Let's go ahead and check. It's a female, so this could be interesting. And, okay, so let's look at the stats. I can tell you right now that it actually is not in melee damage at all. It's also not in weight, it's not in food, and it's not in oxygen. It's actually mutated in stamina. So here's where I want to address this right now. My chain that I'm working with. So let me explain what I mean when I say chain. Um, in ARC when you breed, especially when you're doing mutations, it's best if you stick with one stat. So for example, my first mutation was melee damage and the father of this one is melee number one. From here on out, I will only accept dinos that are mutated in the exact same stat. So I'm only really supposed to be looking for melee damage, but I just want to point out that she did mutate in stamina. Now some people will think, oh that's great, I got a mutation, but it's in a different stat. It doesn't matter. Don't keep it. It's so much easier for you to mutate in a single stat. So I'm going to immediately unclaim her because this is something that you do not want to keep. Remember, if you start mutating in one stat, you need to be consistent and always keep the mutations going in the same stat. So again, I'm only doing melee here. You will also notice that one big giveaway if you do get a mutation is that sometimes it'll be a different color like this one here but it's not the level that we're looking for, so you can skip that. There's a few 238s in here. I'm assuming that they came out as triplets, so let's check and see. This one's a male. And it's the mutation! Okay, sweet! Okay, so I know that it's the mutation, by the way, because melee number one Rex was 384% on the melee damage, and this one is 396. And it's on a male, which is perfect. If we go to show ancestors as well, you'll notice that there's one mutation on the mother side and one on the father side. That's perfectly fine. Don't worry necessarily too much about that, as long as you know that the stat is increasing in the same place, then you know you're fine. So for example, like I said, I knew I know for a fact that melee damage is the only stat that is increasing here. So we can go to options, change name, And I'm going to call him melee number two. I am going to cryo him up and I'm going to throw this outside to raise up. There we go. And of course, I'm going to make sure that there's plenty of meat in his inventory as well. My melee number two has finally grown up, so now we can start letting him breed with all of the base females. I'm gonna walk him up the ramp. Now the old melee is up here, so you can go ahead and cryo this up because we actually don't need him anymore. But I will keep it though. What I'll probably do is put that into a cryo fridge somewhere, but for now, let's walk melee number two into the circle of the females. Go up to options and enable mating on him. And now we wait for more eggs. So at this point, it's pretty much rinse and repeat. So you'll notice, like I said, every single time that we get a mutation, it's going up by two. So the baby that we're looking for when he breeds with all the females and they hatch out, it needs to increase by two. So 
we're looking for our level 240 here. And the melee damage must be higher than 396%. So again, we'll look for a level 240 with melee damage that's greater than 396. There's one. And that is the next melee mutation. So this is number three because it's at 408 and the melee number two was at 396. Let's go to options, change name. And just to be clear, let's check ancestors to make sure it is counting correctly. And yep, there's three mutations. Let's cryo him up and have him raise outside. Melee number three has grown up. Walk him up the ramp. Cryo the old melee. Don't need this anymore and I'll put it in the fridge. Walk him forward. Turn on enable mating. And the baby that I will look for has to be level 242 with melee damage that is greater than 408. There's one. It's on a female. And this is the mutation. Now, it is a female and I will talk about this, but this is our next mutation. So let me just check ancestors real quick. There's one over here and three over here, and that is four. Now, the melee definitely has increased compared to the father, but what do we do with this? Well, there's a couple of things we can do, but first things first, let me cryo her up. Let me first rename though too. I'm gonna cry out this girl. I'm gonna throw her out front. And I will let her raise up. Now here's the thing. I have a female with the mutation and generally you have to have it onto a male. So this is actually the reason why I have my base male over here on the side. I have him out specifically to do this. I'm gonna put him on enable mating and I am going to put my melee mutation that's on the female on mating too. And I'm gonna generate some eggs off of these two. So here's the problem. We cannot progress in the line without having a male. So this is actually what you can do. If you do get your mutation and it happens to be on a female, like my circumstance here, you can take her and you can breed it with a base. But here's the thing, the base obviously has to have zero mutations because you should not be taking a mutated dino and breeding it with a mutated dino to switch it over, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to breed these two up. I'm going to get the exact same level as her, which is 242. Those will pop out of the egg, but it needs to be obviously on a male and basically you can just switch the gender over from a female to a male that way as long as you breed it with a base dino. I also want to bring this up because I know that somebody will comment on this and they'll ask why don't I just continue breeding my melee 3 with the base females over here why not just get the mutation again but this time try for a male and here's where you can argue both ways on this. My argument that I would say to you is this. I already have my mutation. It's just on a girl. And all I have to do is breed it so I can put it onto a male. You need to understand this. Mutations are very rare in ARC. And not only are they rare, but you have six stats that it could possibly mutate into. And here's the thing. You have a 50-50 chance on top of that of whether or not it will be on a male or female. So there is a chance, like if I just continue breeding these over here to try to get a male instead, I could potentially get the same mutation again. And guess what? It could be on a female again. So that's why I normally just 
switch it over the way that I'm going to do with you guys. There's not a wrong way how to do it. It's honestly just down to preference. Alright, there's a 242. Claim that. And it is on a boy. Just to double check, I will show ancestors. And sure enough, there you go. It's four mutations right there. Same exact as the female that's out there. I'm just gonna rename him to Melee 4. We can chuck him out here to raise up. And now that he is raised up, we can walk him up the ramp to breed with all the females. So the next baby that I will look for will be a level 244 with melee damage that is greater than 419. And there's one right there. And that's actually it. So that is our fifth melee. Let me just double check real quick. Yep, five right there. So we're gonna go to options, change name. And the melee damage has definitely increased. We can cryo him up. Chuck him out here and let him raise up. My fifth melee has grown up, so now I have him mating with all my females here. And... The next one that I will look for is a level 246 with melee damage that is greater than 431. There's one. And that is the next mutation. So this is number six. Just double check. Yep, six right there. And let me just compare the stats to the parent. Yes, it has increased. Now it is a female. So, let's just change the name of this. Cryo her up. Bring her out. Once she has raised up, she can mate with the base male. And what we'll do is just we'll get eggs off of them. And we'll need to get the exact same level as her to switch her to a male. Looking at all of the eggs that she laid, there actually is one in here that is a level 248. So that is a mutation off of her. That can actually happen, by the way, too. Um, you can still get mutations because basically she's a mutation that is breeding with a base that has no mutations. So there is that chance. And I will actually double check. But just in case, let me see if there is a boy in here. And yes, there is. So because she is melee number six, I will call this melee six. And it is our male. It's the same exact level as, as her. So that's perfectly fine. But just in case, let's check this one and see if it has increased. So 443. This is very rare, by the way. Nope. So that's just a like a very, very small coincidence that that can happen. But we're gonna cryo him up. We'll raise him up outside. And once he's matured, he can go up there and replace the old melee five. All right, he's ready to go. So let's get rid of the old melee. And let's get him up the ramp. and get him breeding immediately. So the next one we should look for will be level 248, because he's 246, with melee damage that is greater than 443. 
that's my next one. Nice. Four, five, five. So the stats increasing and it is on a mail, thankfully, because that'll save so much more time. And we are currently on seven mutations. Six on this side, one on that side. So options, change name. We can cryo him up and chuck this boy outside. Get some meat for him on his inventory so he doesn't starve. There we go. Let him grow up. Let's walk him up the ramp. Let's get the old one out of the way. And we'll put him in the cryo fridge to keep him for later just in case. Oops, I did not mean to fall down. Get him on enable mating. And the next one we'll look for, which it'll be easier to identify, it should be 250. And the melee needs to be greater than 455. There's one. And that's the mutation. It is on a girl, but that's perfectly fine. The melee has increased. So, let me get her cryoed up. I'm just gonna double check the rest. Nope. So yeah, I will cryo her up and get her outside to raise up. I almost forgot to name her. So, just to double check real quick, make sure she really is number eight. Yeah, she is. So options, change name. And when she grows up, she will mate with our base male so that we can just switch her over to, uh, to a 250 male. Alright, let's take these over. There's a 250. Yes, okay. So this is just melee number 8. And all, yep, all of his ancestors are on one side now. So he can go outside to raise, and then we can continue the breeding process. He's ready to go. It's all grown up now, so we can walk him up the ramp. Do the usual behavior enable mating. And wait around longer for more eggs to collect. When uh, the baby comes out from him, though, it will be level 252. What? was his melee again? It was 466. So melee damage higher than 466. And it's the mutation! Uh, it's on a girl again, unfortunately. But it is the mutation, so I will keep it, definitely. Um, let's go to options, change name. And you should be melee number nine. Yes, you are. All right, so cryo you up. And get you raising outside so that you can breed with the base male over there. There's a 252. And it's on a male, so we'll call him melee number nine. Because he is the exact same as that female that's out there. And we'll get him to raise on up. One's walking away over there. Get him to raise up and we can uh, go to number 10. We're halfway there. I'm gonna get all the way up to 20 mutations in melee. But so far looking good. Walk him up now to the top since he's matured and get some eggs going from from him. So the next one that we're going to look for will be melee number 10 and that level must be 254 with melee damage greater than 478. 254 If I can access it. Oh, there we go. That's it. It is another female, but it is the next mutation. So 490. So this is number 10. So let's go to options, change name.
and we will get her out here raising up next to the base mill. Nice. 254 mill, so this is melee 10. So he can get cryoed and we'll get him raising up. Now we can walk him forward. Get him breeding up. And the next level we will look for is a 256 with melee damage that is greater than 490%. There's two 256s in here. I think they're twins. See which one I can get first. Two, five, six. That's the mutation! And it's on a boy! Thank goodness. Okay. So it has a twin in there. So I, I really don't need to even check it though, because I've got it. So at 502, so it's it's gone up a bit. Uh we need to get him named. And we need to get him raised up. So change. Delete these dinos first, so we can get to him. Alright, so now that we've cleared those out, we can get him cryoed to move him easier out here to raise up. I'll immediately go turn off the mail up here. There we are. We'll let number 11 grow up and then we'll get him mating. So the next baby that we're looking for is a level 258 with melee damage greater than 502. There's one right there. And that is the next mutation! 513% at birth now. That is amazing. Okay, so this is our 12th melee. We are also lucky, and it is on a male. We can cryo him up. Throw him out here. Get some meat from the trough. And we can get him raising so that he can start breeding up there. He's growing up now. Let's get on top of him. And walk to the center here. Put him on enable mating. The next baby that we're going to be looking for, the level will be 260, and the melee will be greater than 513% on birth. There's one. And that is our next mutation. It's on a female, so I will have to switch it over, but this is number 13. So let's go to option, change name. We'll cryo her up and get her raising up outdoors next to our base mail. So we'll let her grow up and then all we have to do, make these two together and get an egg that is the exact same level as her to switch it over to a boy. It's a male, so that's switched over, so we can go to options, change name. And we should just be able to walk him out since he's already facing the door. Not quite. Okay. He is grown up, so we can walk him up the ramp, put him on enable mating, and let's see. So the next Rex that we should look for will be a level 262, and the melee will be greater than 525%.
So we should be going after the 14th mutation in melee. There's one. And that is our next melee mutation. Let's go. That is number 14. So options change name. And it's on a male. He is growing up. So let's rinse and repeat. And put him on mating. Alright, so the next level will be a 264 with melee that's greater than 537%. There's one. That is actually it, and it's on a female. This is number 15, so options change name. get her raisin next to our base male so we can switch her over. Pod him up and let's put him outside to raise up. Get him prepped to breed with all those females. Right, so he's grown up, so we can walk him up the ramp to get him mating with all the females. Enable mating, and the next level that we're looking for is 266 with melee damage that is greater than 549% melee. Here's the 266. That is the next mutation, right there. At 560% melee, it has increased from the father. So this is melee number 16. It is on a female, so we will do the usual and we will breed this, me this melee female with the base male to switch it over to the exact same level male. Oh! There's a 268 in there. I see that on the far left hand side. So we're trying to switch over and just look for- oh there's another one as well. So we're just trying to switch over and look for a male but it looks like we got a mutation from the melee 16 female breeding with that base male over there. So she's level 266. So we're just trying to look for a male that's 266. So first off, let's just see if we have a male. Yep, here we go. Let's just first claim him just in case. So he is our melee 266 male. He's at 560 just because, let's check the 268s. Oh, that's a male too. No, unfortunately not. Okay, so not on this one, so we're gonna unclaim him. And let's check this one over here. No, but there is a twin. Now I am going to check it because I will say this, I have heard and somebody on our server that plays with us did say that twins have a chance of mutating in different stats and I'm going to just triple check just to make sure. I have heard that this was a thing, but 
No, it looks like it's not mutated in the right stat either. So let's go ahead and unclaim that. So it doesn't look like that those two mutations were useful, but we do have it switched over to a male, so we're going to go ahead and cryo him up. We're going to chuck him out here to raise, and once he's matured, he can mate with all the females that are up there. So he is raised up, so we can walk him up the ramp and get him mating with all of the females here. And the level of Baby Dino is going to be 268 with melee damage that is greater than 560%. There's a 268 in there. Let's see if I can reach it though, because it's kind of hard to reach. Oh. There's the 268. Oh, it's the melee damage. That's awesome. 572% at birth compared to the original parent over here. That's awesome. And it's on a male. If I show ancestors, it's at 17. So this is number 17, melee. Melee 17 out of 20. So let's go ahead and cryo him up. And we can get him raising outdoors, and once he has grown up, we can replace the old one up there with him, and we can continue the process to number 18. Let's walk him up the ramp, and turn him on enable mating. And the next dino that we're looking for will be a level 270 with melee damage that's greater than 572% melee. There's a 270. It looks like there's triplets or twins even. Oh, that's a mutation too. Okay, 5A4. So the melee has increased on this one, and it is on a male as well. Let me just double check ancestors. Yep, 17 on this side and one on this side, so this is number 18. So let's go to options, change name. We can go ahead and cryo him up. and chuck him out here for him to raise up. Now that he has raised up, let's go ahead and get him to the center up here at the top. And let's make sure he's on enable mating. So the next baby that we're gonna look for will be level 272, and the melee damage will be greater than 584. There's one. And that is the next mutation. At birth, it comes out at 596 compared to over here on the right at the father's. So this is number 19 on melee mutations. So let's go to options, change name. And luckily for us, it is actually on a male. cryo him up and we're gonna chuck him outdoors for him to raise up to continue the process for our last and final mutation which is number 20. My melee number 19 has finally grown up so let's get on top of him and ride him to the top of the ramp for all of the females for him to mate with. He's on enable mating. So the baby that we're gonna look for will be level 274 and the melee damage will have to be greater than 596 at birth. And when we do get this baby, just keep in mind that this will be our 20th mutation in melee damage. 
There's a 274. And that's it! That is number 20 on the melee damage. At birth, it's coming out at 608. That is awesome. Let's check the ancestors. So, you will notice on the far right hand side that it says 20 out of 20 on the patrilineal and on the left hand side it says 0 out of 20 on the matrilineal. Now when you're breeding yours, if you notice that yours is different compared to mine, don't worry. As long as you know that you are increasing the stat in the same exact area and you can see that it's increasing, then you're you're perfectly fine. Like for example, if it says one on this side and 19 on the other, but you know that you've been leveling it in the same exact stat the whole time, then you're perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and rename this boy right here. So go to options, change name. So this is melee number 20. We can go ahead and cryo him up and we can let him raise outside. Alright, so now he can raise up outside and we can talk about the next step in this process. My 20th mutation in melee has grown up and at birth you could see that it's at 608% on melee and if I compare that to the base which is where we started it's at 372% so you can see why you would want to do mutations in arc because every time that you get a mutation you obviously increase that stat but I will say this it also takes a lot of time and there were points where I was throwing out hundreds of eggs without getting my desired mutation. So for those of you that are doing this and learning for the first time, just keep in mind that this is down to chance and you can go through hundreds of eggs before getting the mutation that you do want. So now here's the thing. What do we do next? Well, you can go about this so many different ways, but I want to put up a hypothetical here. What if you do want to mutate something else besides melee damage. What if you want to mutate health? Well, you might think that you could just start mutating health off of this melee, and this is where I'm going to tell you no. So if you do mutations in ARC, especially for those of you that are breeding for the very first time, you need to keep your chains separate. So again, this is my melee chain. I'm not going to touch him. The only thing that I can mutate on this one is the melee damage. So then, how do you mutate something else? Let's say that I want to do a chain in health mutations. Where do I start? Well, you always start with your base male and your base female. This is the exact same process that I showed you on how to do the male mutations. If you remember, I started with breeding my base male with my base female, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna get on top of my base male and I'm gonna walk him up this ramp with all of the females. I'm going to make sure that I go up to him and I'm going to go to behavior and I'm going to go to enable mating. So this base male will breed with all of these females here and the level that I am going to look for will be 236 with health that is greater than 9680. Again, because we're going after our health mutations. So I'm going to hop down here. And I'm going to wait by my oviraptor for it to collect as much eggs as it possibly can. Then I'll take those over to my incubation and I will hatch those out and look for my first health mutation. And again, just as a heads up, this is the same exact process that I did with everybody for my mutations for melee. But I'll show you how to get the first health one just so that you can see that process in action. And then I will skip forward all the way until I get my 20th health mutation. Here's a 236. And this one is the first health mutation right here at 10,120 at birth. And if we go to show ancestors, you can see that it's at one out of 20 on the matrilineal side because it mutated from the mother and not from the father. So we can go to options and change name. So I'm gonna call it health one male and we can go ahead and cryo him up. 
Now this part will seem very familiar to everyone and that's because well this is the same process that you would do f that we showed you for the melee mutations. So what you would do is you would chuck out your one health mutation on the male. You would let him raise up and he would then walk to the top of that ramp. He would mate with all of the females. The next baby that you would look for would be a level 238 with health that was higher than 10,120. And you would do that all the way up to 20 mutations. So what I'm going to do though at this point in the video is I'm not gonna walk you through every single health mutation. I'm gonna skip forward until I get my 20th health mutation on this Rex here. I already have my 20 melee mutations back over here, so I will meet you guys back up once I have gotten all 20 of my health mutations. So in front of me, you will notice that I have both of my chains. On the left hand side, I have the melee mutations all the way up to 20. If I go to show ancestors, this is the one that I showed you. On the right hand side, this one is new. This is my health mutations. And I'll access the inventory to show you what this one looks like. So with 20 mutations in health, it comes out to 18,479 at birth. And if I go to show ancestors, you can see that I went through the entire process that I showed all of you before. So now here's the biggest thing. We want to take the health from this Rex here and we want to combine it with the melee here. By doing so, you're creating what I call your final base or sometimes I'll even call it your boss breeders because half of the time you're breeding these creatures to go into boss fights with. So how do we do that? Well, first and foremost, I'm going to say this and I'm going to point out the obvious. The mutations for melee are on a male and the mutations for health are also on a male. If your 20th mutation happens to be on the same gender, it's actually a really simple and easy fix. It's kind of like when you get a female mutation, all you have to do is take one of them. It doesn't matter which one and you want to breed it with your base. So I'm going to take my melee, I'll put him on enable mating, and I'll put a base female that I pulled from over there on enable mating as well too. And all I'm going to do is just breed her with him so that I get the exact same level as this one right here, except I'm just looking for a female to switch this over because then I can take that female to then breed it with the male health that's over there. So let me collect some eggs up and then I will get my 20 mutations on melee on a female. There's a 274 there and it is on a female. So I'm gonna go to options and change name. And this is literally just a female that has the melee damage. We just switched it over. So I'm going to cryo her up and I will throw her outdoors for her to raise up. She has finally grown up so now we can walk her over to the health Rex. Remember she is our melee so we're trying to combine this melee with that high health so make sure you put an able mating on these two. And because we are combining these two dinos together I want to point out that the level will be much higher and I do know what the level is going to be. It should be 314 because I have 20 mutations. Every time you get a single mutation, the level of the dino goes up by 2. So all I have to do is take 20, multiply that by 2, which is 40. You take 274 plus 40 and that gives you the 314. But if you don't know that, if you don't want to do the math on it, it's fine. Just keep in mind that the you're looking for a higher level dino here with the combined stats of the parent. This is going to give us our boss breeder by the way. So let's collect up as many eggs as possible then hatch them out. 
So, tossing out these eggs, let's see what we get here. I'm just gonna open the door for a little bit more light. And there we go. So there's a level 314 in there, and there's only one, unfortunately. Now, you need to keep breeding until you get a male and a female. So let me claim this one right here. Go to accept. It's a male. Before I name it, let me just access the inventory and show you. So you can tell that it pulled the higher health. Everything else, like stamina, oxygen, food, and weight, should be the exact same here. And you'll notice it also pulled the higher the higher melee. So this is the combined baby. And if I go to show ancestors, you can see that it has 20 mutations aside, 20 mutations aside, because we have 20 in health and 20 in melee. So that equals out to 40. So let's go to options, change name. And I'm gonna call it my boss breeder male. I'm also going to cryo him up and I will throw him outdoors to raise, but I need a female. The reason why I want a male and a female is I want to be able to breed my boss breeders together to create disposables. And I'm also going to point out to everybody, no, I will not imprint him because he is going to be there just for me to pull out disposables. And I'll show you what I'm talking about once I get my female. So let me go grab more eggs. And let me hatch those out. And it is on a female, thankfully. So let's go to options, change name. And we'll do the same thing. We'll cryo her up. Throw her outdoors. You can see that the other one is raising up just fine over there. Make sure we put some meat into her inventory. So my male and my female boss breeders have grown up and by looking at their inventories, again, these are the combined stats here. The reason why I do get a male and a female is to do this. I put both of them on enable mating and by having these two together, I can create disposable dinos that I can take those into boss fights. I will never use these two. I'll keep them aside like in a cryo fridge and whenever I have Rexes that I need to use for a boss fight, I can just breed these two together to get the exact same level as the parents here. And this is where I would say, yes, this will be the time to imprint. So I also want to show you the stats of these particular Rexes imprinted and show you a comparison between this and an imprinted one. Let me just hatch out a few eggs and we'll show you what that looks like. There we go, the exact same level, so I will claim this one, and right now it's at 0% on the imprint, so this is what the stats look like before, and once it has fully raised up and you've done your 100% imprint, these are what the stats look like after. This has gone up so much more if you compare that to the boss breeder without an imprint. Again, this is the exact same dinosaur here. So from t from 18 to 24, because I believe this one was at, yep, 18,479 health to 24,000, and then 608 melee to 787. So yeah, this thing is an absolute monster. Now, it is at this point in the video where I am going to start shifting gears and address the more advanced breeding mechanics. For those of you who are beginners in breeding, everything that I've just shown you up to this point is really all you need to know to get started, but I still encourage you to listen and watch because you might learn something new. Moving forward with this advanced breeding, I want to point out that I will be using tech binoculars to help explain some of the information to make it so much easier, just as a heads up for everyone. For those of you that don't know, breeding has changed from Ark Survival Evolved, the first game. There is a new mechanic to this game that is a little bit different, and basically it allows players to go back and modify stats on a dino that has already been bred. To put it in Ark terms, mutations are separate. 
But what does that actually mean? Because I too struggled at first with understanding what that meant. Well, let me show you. I've just shown everyone on how to mutate dinos. Over here on the left hand side are all of my base rexes. And then over here on the far right hand side are my mutations in health and in melee. And then right here in front of me, I have my final mutated base. For me to explain this, let me give you an absolute real scenario that can happen. Let's say you have finished breeding, or you're in the middle of breeding your Rexes for mutations, and you happen to be around the map when you spot a level 150 Rex. So you do what any person would do in this situation. You immediately knock that thing out and shove kibble in its inventory, and you let it tame up. Now that Rex tames, and oh wow, look at the melee damage on this. This melee is so much better than the melee that I have on my base female Rexes back home. Damn it, I wish I would have had this stat before I started breeding. Well, guess what, you can. At any point, you can incorporate stats into your base dino to make them even better. In front of me here on the left hand side, I have that 150 female Rex that I knocked out and tamed that had the high level melee, and on the right hand side, I have my base male. I'm going to first by look at my base mail with all of you, and I want to explain how the tech binoculars work just so that you understand what I'm looking at. So the first stat that I will observe with all of you is melee damage. I also want to point out that you will see a group of three parentheses. The first number that is in parentheses refers to how many stat points that this particular Rex has, which correlates to the percentage that it will have for melee damage. The higher the stat points, the higher the melee damage. And again, it all comes down to random chance when you are out in the wild knocking out Rexes and taming them. The stat distribution of points can be random. So again, that's why you want to tame a lot of Rexes to begin with. So that's what the first number refers to. The number in the middle that is zero right there in parentheses, that refers to how many mutations or the mutation points and I'll come back to this in a moment and then the last parentheses that you see there that's zero that refers to how many levels did you put into your creature remember that you have a total of 88 levels that you can pump into your dinos the first step that you need to focus on when you are trying to update your bloodline is to first go after all of your base dinos and update those. That should be your priority. So it's pretty simple over here. She has the higher melee damage at 46 points compared to the male, which is our base that only has 42. She has higher weight at 38 points and he has 31 points in weight. So it's entirely up to you how you want to incorporate those stats and this also works not just for higher stat points to incorporate in your base but let's say for example if you want to incorporate lower stat points especially for those of you unofficial this works as well too but just for the sake of this I am going to breed these two together and like I said your first priority is to update your base dinos you need to make sure that you replace all of the ones that you were using to originally breed, you need to get rid of these and update it to the better stat for all of the females and you will need one base male. But because I tamed this one here and it happens to be a female, that's why I'm breeding her with my base male. If she happened to have been a boy with that high melee, it probably would have been a lot easier because I could have just put her up there to breed with all those females over there. I'm gonna go ahead and collect up as many of these eggs as I can and I'm gonna hatch them out so that I can start updating my base. And I will compare it to this one here. So let me go to my incubation. Let me hatch all these out and show you what I get here. So all of them have started hatching out and at this point, like most of you will probably be using a calculator of some sort anyway. I'm just using the binoculars to make this a lot easier. And already by looking at this girl right here, if I go up to her, I can tell that she pulled all of the stats between the mother 
and the father that are outside breeding right now. So just as a heads up to, you need to make sure because you're updating your base, of course this cannot have any mutations here. This is a female, I'm going to go ahead and claim it. The first thing I will do with all of you guys is show ancestors and yep, there we go. Zero mutations, zero mutations. By the way too, this is my first batch of eggs that I've thrown out and this is about 45, 50 eggs right here. Just as a reminder, just so you guys have an understanding of how many babies that I went through here to get this base. So let's compare the stats between the mother and the father. So looking at the health, you can see that it is the exact same between both of the parents because they actually did have the same stats. The stamina is higher on the male. The oxygen is higher on the male. It pulled the higher weight from the female on the left hand side. And it also pulled the higher melee from the female on the left. So this is perfect for us. So now that we know that this is definitely our base female, we can go to options change name. And I'm going to purposefully call mine base female updated. And I'm doing this so that when this is done, I can compare this one to my old bases visually for everyone to, to see. I'm going to scan the rest of these dinos. Now, because this one was a level two, four, five, all of the other ones that I claim that are also level two, four, five will be the base. So just go through all of your dinos, scan their levels and see if there's any ones that you want that are the exact same level. Those will be your bases, but I'm not seeing any. I do see plenty of mutations though. Like you'll notice like the blue that's right here or the purple right there. And again, for those of you that are trying to go after color, you can definitely claim those and keep those to the side. And I'll talk about color in just a little bit. Here's another level two, four, five that I'll claim. And it's luckily on a male. And again, this is in the same batch. So I'm gonna go to options, change name. And I will call it base male updated. I will triple check and yes, it has the health, the stamina is correct, the oxygen, the food, the weight, and the melee damage all looks good, but just a triple check, zero mutations, zero mutations, yes, this truly is our updated base male. And just as a reminder for everybody that once you do get a male and a female base that is updated, remember that you can always go up to them, put them on enable mating, and as long as the baby dinos come out the exact same level, that is how you can get more of your base females. Once you do have all of your base females updated and ready to go, it is time to focus on some of the other bloodline areas, and this all comes down to where you guys are at with your own breeding process. Now over here, I have my final boss breeders already completed but before I update these because you will notice that this one has the 42 points which was lower in the melee damage on top of the 20 mutations that you can see there because 40 divided by 2 is 20 that's the 20 mutations in melee we still need to update him as well too but you have to consider and think about your final chain so because my rexes over here i updated their weight and i updated their melee i need to update the melee on this 20th chain because it's still on 42 whereas these are on 46. so the best way to correct it is as long as your 20th mutation in melee is on a male then what you can do is just basically walk him up to all of the updated base females get him breeding with all of them. I will copy the settings over and let an OV Raptor collect up as many eggs as possible. And you're going to be looking for a Rex that is a little bit higher level than that 274. So now that these are hatching, let's go through and look at all of the babies together to see whether or not one of these not only pulled all of the mutations, but the melee, and you have to remember the weight. And right off the bat, here we go. This is one 
right here. It is on a female, but you will notice when I look at the melee damage specifically with the tech binoculars that it has 46 natural points, which was the higher, the higher melee to begin with. And it also carried over the 20 mutations in melee damage. So I'll even show you, I'll imprint it here. I imprinted the wrong one. Let me imprint the right one. And let me access the inventory of the 285. There we go. So health is normal, stamina normal, oxygen normal, food normal, weight normal. And there is your melee damage. So... What I will do is I can keep this one, but I will quickly look through just because you do ideally want it to be on the male because it is the 20th mutation. And look, there's one right there. And yes, it is on a male. So I'll claim this. We were only pulling over two stats, which is why I'm getting another one so quickly here. So if I go to show ancestors, you can see there's 20 mutations right there. So what I will do is I'm going to cryo him up. And I'm going to chuck him out here. And that is the old 20th mutation in melee. So I'm going to rename him to... updated melee 20. You don't have to call it updated melee 20. Ideally, you would want to get rid of the old one because this one is no longer useful anymore. But at birth, this is at 631.5. And if we compare that to the old melee, that's at 608. So this is why you would want to go through and update all of your bases so that you can then update your chain. Again, by you going out and taming all of these high level wild rexes, you can go back and update your bases at any point, which will then allow you to update whatever mutation down the road that you are currently working on. So what I will do now is I will also show you what this looks like on my final boss breeders because these all have the lower melee as well. And then I'll show you what an imprinted updated one looks like too. So the way to start that would be to get on the, the boss breeder male. Make this a lot easier because one male breeding with all these females is way easier. Walk him up the ramp. Hop off of him and put him on mating so that he can breed with all of the updated base females. Somewhere in this batch is going to be my new boss breeder that is updated. So let's look at all of these to figure out which one it's going to be. I'm going to immediately just go for the higher level of all of them, which I believe is a 325 in here. So let me just look at this carefully. It does have the higher melee. It has oxygen, the weight, it also has the food, and it has the stamina as well as the health mutations. Because remember, this not only has my melee mutations, but it also has my health mutations. Therefore, this is my boss breeder updated male. So I'm going to go ahead and claim him. boss breeder male updated and I can go through here and I need to find myself a new female that I can update as well and let's see there's one right there oh and it's a female so let's go ahead and claim that boss breeder updated female she has the health she has the melee and she has all of the stats that are the highest possible here. So we can cryo up both of these and we can raise them outdoors and we can get ourselves an imprinted one as well to compare to the older one.
In front of me, I have my old imprinted vinyl Rex that was originally gotten off of the Boss Breeders, and it was at 787% with 100% imprinting. You also need to keep in mind is I also have the 88 levels that I could potentially pump into this as well too. And then on the left-hand side, I have the updated one because I updated my bases, and now let's look at this. So with the updated melee on this and at 100% imprinting, this is what it comes out to at birth, which is a bit higher. Now you can see why you would want to go back and update all of your previous creatures, especially if you manage to tame a high level that has a way better stat. It's very useful to do this step. I also want to talk about a hypothetical here. Now this really only pertains to people I would imagine that play on lower rates, like people on official. Uh, in front of me, I have my 11th melee mutation. This was off of my old base that I got rid of, okay? And up there on the platform is my new updated base. So again, this male, this mutation is off of my lower stat in melee. Hypothetically, you could take this and walk it up the ramp, have it mate with all the females here, you could technically get the 12th mutation off of these, but there's a catch. It could be on the lower stat in the melee, but it would be the mutation. And eventually, once you do get it raised up, you could keep mating with all the base females. Eventually, those stats will even out. But the other issue that we should address is that the numbers, you won't be looking for the level of the dino, you will actually need to claim almost all of the babies and look at their stats and probably be using a stat calculator to make sure that it did mutate in the correct area. I want to mention that that is incredibly messy, but it is a thing in the game that you can do. This step is only for people who play on official servers. You guys should know this, but if you remember, there is such a thing as max level dino cap. This is assuming that it is the exact same as what it was on ASE. Any creature on official that reaches level 450 will be wiped and get deleted. The way that you correct this is you go out and tame as many low level dinos that you can. The lowest level that can naturally spawn is a level 5. When you do knock them out, you should punch them until they lose all taming efficiency because the lower the taming efficiency, the lower the level it tames out to, which also means that it has less stat points to work with. And then once you have tamed up as many low level dinos as possible, it's time to put them together and combine them for the lowest stats and then get this thing, a level one Rex. So you'll notice by looking at it with the tech binoculars, it has zero points in every single stat. The lowest level creature that can exist in this game is a level one because it has to exist. Therefore, it is assigned a number. And again, this really is for people that only play on official servers. You want to take that level one Rex that has the zero stat points in all of its categories and breed that with your base Rex, ideally before before you start mutating because you need the level of your creature to be really low. So this is the area where like this is up for debate, especially for those of you on official. It depends on what creature it is that you are breeding, but certain stats you do have to sacrifice and some of them are not necessary. For example, if you are breeding a Rex on official servers, you realistically do not need oxygen. That should be zero. And weight and food need to be lower as well too. Health is actually kind of redundant, especially for creatures that do a percentage. And stamina, in my opinion too, can be lower as well. The best stat that you want to look for is obviously melee damage. But again, at the end of the day, it depends on the creature and you need to pick and choose what you want to work with here. And if they did have a baby, this is potentially what it could look like with zero points in food, weight, and oxygen. I've significantly lowered the level of my Rex to 127, which is going to allow me, especially to on official servers, to mutate one particular stat, which could be melee damage, all the way up to the maximum in this game. And again, for single player users and for people who play on unofficial servers, like you rent your own server, you can go past the 450 cap and you don't have to worry about your dinosaur being deleted. This also means potentially for you official players that your final 
base dino, the one that has all of the mutations, should not exceed level 361. And the reason for that is because if you have a Rex that is level 361 and you pump all 88 levels into it, then the Rex will be 449. Once it does tick over to 450, that is when it does get wiped. Now, it is time for us to address stat points. If you remember earlier on, I made the statement that stat points are separated. Well, I want to show you visually what that means. But before I do, I want to put up on the screen something that one of the devs said before the release of ASA. I would pause here and read if you want, but I found it really interesting that they said that they could basically buff or nerf stats depending on the meta. But I want to direct your attention to stat cap points because this is implemented in ASA differently. Let's talk about stat cap points. I will explain the differences between Ark Survival Evolved and Ark Survival Ascended. But first, let's look at this melee number one Rex in front of me. I'm going to be observing the melee damage. You will see the number 42 in the first group of parentheses, and that refers to this creature's stat points that it has earned upon taming. And then the number in the middle... That refers to how many stat points that this creature has received because of mutations. Now, don't confuse this with how many mutations your creature has. So let me show you what I mean. That number in the middle reads out as two. But if I access the inventory and look at the ancestors, you will notice that I only have one mutation. You see, every time that you get a mutation in this game, the stat point increases by two. So if I had, for example, five mutations in melee damage, then that number would be 10 stat points in the middle. Now, if I had 20 mutations in melee damage, then that number would be 40 because you always multiply it by two. Now, there is such a thing as stat cap points, and this is for every single person who plays this game. If you are on official, or if you're on single player, or if you're on unofficial, it doesn't matter. There is such a thing for everyone as a max stat point cap, and that number is technically 254. I also want to point out that the devs did say in that little post that the cap was 255, but technically you cannot actually get it to 255. 254 is the cap. In front of me here, I have a heavily mutated Rex. I want everyone to focus on the stamina stat. You will notice that this Rex has 44 base points from being tamed, but it also has 254 stat points from mutations alone. This means that this Rex has 127 mutations in stamina. And I got that number from taking 254 and dividing that by 2, which gives me 127 mutations. Now this is why mutations are separate, like I said before. This means that anyone and everyone can always have 254 stat points from the mutations, and at the same time, you can have the highest base points possible on your creature and not have to worry about it. This is why ASA is so different. Because if this were Ark Survival Evolved, this creature, this Rex, would not be able to exist. Because in that game, mutation points and base points were actually together. They were not separate. So now it is time to discuss negative mutations. For me to explain this properly, you want to first ask yourself, how many times do you want to mutate a singular stat in this game? So I mentioned before that you can mutate one stat 127 times. So I'm going to demonstrate this by showing you my melee number 20 Rex. I'm going to go to Ancestors and I'm going to show you the patrilineal side and the matrilineal side. The matrilineal says 0 out of 20 and the patrilineal says 20 out of 20. Now in this game and in ASE, the way that it worked is that when one side read 20 out of 20, that means that from now on, if I want to get mutations in melee damage, I would now have half the chance that I would have before to get a mutation. Not necessarily the mutation that I want, just any mutation. You have half the chance now. So there's a way to fix this, and it's about negative mutations. But let me help you by showing you my melee number one. 
because I was getting mutations pretty rapidly before. So when you look at something that's only been mutated once, you see where it says 1 out of 20, 0 out of 20, I can still get mutations from the patrilineal or the matrilineal. But because my 20th mutation over here has 20 on one side, I now have half the chance. There's a way to correct this, and it's negative mutations. And this is specifically for people that want to breed to the maximum in this game. Now the question is, is when should you start your negative mutation line? And depending on who you ask, people will suggest at different times. However, I will say this, you need to start it as soon as possible. You need to start it as soon as you get your first mutation. Here's why. It all comes down to time efficiency. So let me take you back in time to 21 minutes and 30 seconds in my video. At this time, I just got my melee number one Rex. And here in front of me, it is now fully grown up. Now, you should have two separate things going at the same time for you to be efficient. So over here on the left-hand side, you will notice that I have all of my base females over there, and I have my melee number one Rex. Now, you probably have been wondering, what is this platform for back here? And this is going to be for my negative mutations, and I'm going to set them up over here to start the breeding process. Again, you should be doing this at the exact same time that you are breeding for your regular mutations. And the earlier that you start this, the better. So what you do is you take your melee number one Rex and you immediately walk him up the ramp. This is going to be as if we are getting our second mutation in melee damage. And you are, you're gonna be doing two things here and you're only gonna do this one time here. So to get the initial stage started, depending if you are doing this with your first mutation, you should do and look for two things. Number one, you should look for a 238 that has melee damage that's greater than 384.5. That will give you your melee number two Rex. But what you should also do is we need to look for the exact same level as the father to start the negative mutations. We need to look for a level 236, but we need to look for it on a female. Why? Because we're going to use this melee number one Rex and we need to use another melee number one Rex to start the line. Once they have started hatching, you need to look at all of the babies. Remember, you're doing two things here. You should be looking for your second mutation on melee damage, and you need to also be looking for the exact same level as the father. In my case, the father was level 236, but I'm looking for that on a female, and I have it right here in front of me. For the purpose of this step, I'm just going to show you the negatives. I'm not going to claim the second melee mutation here. So this right here is a level 236. I'm just going to look at the show ancestors. And yes, it is 1 out of 20 on melee damage. It is the exact same as the father that is out there currently breeding with all of the base females. There he is right there, 236. So what I will do is I will take this female here and I will rename her. melee one female. I will then cryo her up and I will allow her to raise up outdoors and then we can start the negative line. My female melee number one Rex has grown up. Now next to her I also have the exact same level because this is the melee number one male Rex. So to start this, I would recommend that you breed mutations with mutations. If you can keep it as the same mutation, it makes it so much cleaner, which is what I will be doing with you guys. So to start the process, you go up to both of the parents and you put them on enable mating. So here's the other thing. I'm specifically just going to look for the exact same level. Doing negative mutations is really easy because you're not looking for any different level. I'm looking for the exact same level as the parents, 236. But the thing is, is I need two babies. I need a male and a female to keep this thing going. So I'm going to collect up a few eggs and then I will hatch them out and show you what I get. Now that these two have laid a few eggs, go ahead and collect them up and take them to your incubation. Start throwing them out. And remember, we're just looking for the exact same level as the parents, which is 236. 
There's a 236 there. That one is a male. That's a male as well. So here is a female. I'm going to claim this one. Now, when I name these, I'm going to specifically call these from now on generation. This one is going to be called Gen 1 female, and I'm also going to claim a male, same exact level, and I'm going to call him Gen 1 male. Both of these Rexes, if I go into their inventory and if I look at show ancestors, here's the interesting thing. You will notice now that it says I have one mutation on the patrilineal and one mutation on the matrilineal. Why is this happening? Well, to be simple, you are putting mutations with mutations. Every single time that you do this, you're going to double the actual number on the parents, okay? So let's look at this as it raises up. Let's put these outside for them to raise, and then we can breed this Gen 1 female with this Gen 1 male. It is at this point that your Generation 1 male and female has grown up. You want to take those two and you want to breed them together. And you are going to be looking for the exact same level as the parents, but again, you will need two of them, a male and a female. So. I'm going to let these two mate together. We will look for a 236 male and a 236 female, but the baby will breed differently on the ancestors. Right now, it shows one on the patrilineal and one on the matrilineal, which means that this has two mutations. And I can tell you right now that when I get the baby from these two, once I hatch it out, it should say two on one side and two on the other, equaling to four mutations. So. Let me take these eggs and go hatch them out and show you. 236 male and a 236 female. Perfect. That's what I'm looking for. The exact same level as the parents that are out there. So let's claim this one. And because this came from the generation one parent, this is now generation two. This is our gen two male and this is our gen two female. Now, if I go to show ancestors, yes, I was correct there. So when you look at this, it's now two on this side and two on this side, equaling to four mutations. So we're going to rinse and repeat. We're going to take these two. We're going to chuck them outdoors for them to raise up. There we go. And we will let these two dinos here raise up and once they are ready we can mate these two together. So these two have grown up so now we can start mating these two together and again same exact level we're just going to look for a male and a female and we will call the next pair gen 3 and then we'll breed the gen 3s with each other and then we will look for the gen 4. Gen 4s will breed with each other and then we'll look for Gen 5, and so on and so forth. Now, I am going to skip forward in this point in the video, because at this point, it is very much rinse and repeat. You're going to breed your generations with each other. In front of me here, I have all of the generations of the Rexes that I went through and bred. Now, I am going to show you their inventory, and I will show you their ancestors in just a moment, but I want to tell you that if you do the process that I just showed you right there, you will go all the way up to 32 generations to get to the number that you need. So, I want to go ahead and start looking at some of the generations here, just to show you guys what's happening with the numbers in the ancestors. So, when I do look at the ancestors, I want to point this out now, that when you're looking at the matrilineal and at the patrilineal side, you need to take these numbers and add them together. So, 2 right here plus 2 right here means that this particular rex that I have is for mutations, is what it reads. Now, no number in the ancestors here, like none of these numbers have increased. When you breed mutations with mutations, the number that's stored in here increases, not necessarily the stat, okay? So 
the number, like I said, jumps exponentially. So when I took these two Gen 2s and bred them with each other, that number went from 4 over here, because 2 plus 2 is 4, and then it went to my Gen 3, which is 8. And here we go, because 4 on this side and 4 on this side is 8. And if you go up to the Gen 4, this number will read 16, because that number is growing. It is doubling here. So if this number is 16, then that means that this one, Gen 5, is 32, because 16 and 16 is 32. Something else to point out. For those of you that are on official rates, you might be thinking, once you get your Generation 5 female, once that comes out, you might be waiting around for your Gen 5 male, and the fastest thing for you to do would be to take your Gen 5 female and breed that with your Gen 4 male. And yes, that will work as well. The reason why I did not do that here is because if you notice, when you look at my ancestors, the number on either side will read as the same. It's just a little bit easier for me to keep track of those numbers when you breed the same generation with the same generation. So just to show you that these numbers are jumping exponentially here, let's look at Gen 14. And you can see that that number is increasing quite a bit. And then if I compare that to Gen 23, which is over here, that number is jumping much greater as well. And then if I go all the way down here, here's Gen 29, for example, that number is just increasing a lot. But there is a point where it needs to stop. And for me, that was Gen 32. Let me explain this carefully. So, this is my final rex here. How do I know this? Well, here's why. This number is the one that you want to focus on. This number that I have here is 1,610,612,736. And that's just on this side, on the matrilineal. It is the same thing on the patrilineal. Now, if we add those two numbers together, that number is over 3 billion. This game can only store a 32-bit integer number. The 32-bit max integer number is 2,147,483,647. When you look at mutations, those numbers can appear in the positive direction, or they could have a negative. Basically, what you are looking for is a dino where the number is in the positive. And when you add these two numbers together, so these are both positive that you can see, that number should exceed that 2.1 billion. And in the case of my Gen 32 Rex here, this does, okay? Now, you might be thinking, well, what would happen if your Gen 32 had a baby. Well, I already did that, and I want to show you what happens, but I just want to show you again, this is my 32 generation female, and I also have it on a male as well. This is going to be the most important Rex for you to keep, is your Gen 32. We will need this for later. But I did breed these two together, and they did have an offspring over here. This one is unnamed, but I want to go up to it and look. And if you look at the ancestors, you will now notice that that number is now negative. This Rex is not at all useful, okay? So you need to have a stopping point. You're going to have to do a little bit of math, but it's not difficult. You just need to add the numbers together. But this 32 is perfect because, again, it goes over the 2.1 billion just from adding these two numbers together. Again, both of the numbers need to be positive. Now it is time to show the negative mutations in play and why they are so important. In front of me, I have my updated Melee 20 Rex. 
Now you might remember previously in the video, I did go out and I updated my bases because I found a higher level Rex that had melee damage that was better than my old base. So I went out and updated my old bases, but remember I only updated the last and final in the chain, which was number 20. So you'll notice that this particular Rex here has 46 base points, 46 natural points in melee damage. But remember this entire process here in front of me that I used to do my generation, my negative chain, I started with the melee number one Rex. This actually has the lower melee damage at 42 points but that will not matter because if you update your bases the way that I've also updated my bases and you're wondering how that's going to affect this don't worry it will be fine so if you do end up updating your bases at any point as you are doing your generations it's perfectly fine so this generation right here has 42 points on melee, but that's not the important thing. The important thing is the ancestors and the number that's here. And when these add up, that it's over the 2.1 billion. So it's at this point that you need to take your final chain that you had, let's say right here in melee damage, this is on a male. I'm gonna take this thing, I'm gonna walk it up to the gen 32 female. And I'm going to put both of these on enable mating. Now it's very important that we collect up as many eggs as possible. And we are basically going to be looking for an updated 20 out of 20 on melee damage. Now that these have started to hatch, we need to look at all of the babies that are in front of us. And we're basically going to be looking for the same exact level right here as the melee number 20. It has all of the stats that we want, but we need to look very carefully at the ancestors. So let's look for a 285 on a male. And the first one in this line happens to be a 285 male. So I'm gonna go ahead and claim this. And I'm going to go ahead and look at the ancestors. Now, here's the thing. This particular Rex shows up with a negative value over here on the left hand side. And it shows up with a 20 over 20 on this side here. We need to keep this. Now you might be looking at this and getting confused, but basically I need you to understand that this game is not designed to recognize a negative number. Therefore, it is basically a zero. So I want to show you what happens when you let this particular male Rex here grow up. We're going to cryo him up. And we're going to chuck him outdoors here. We're going to rename him as well. I'm going to call him melee number 20 male because that's what he is. And the N that I put in the name refers to the negative that we have in the bloodline. So the melee baby that I have has grown up. Now, just to show you again, the ancestors, when you look at this, it is a bit confusing. But remember what I said before, that the game is not designed to recognize a negative number. Therefore, it's a zero. So I can mutate on this side, but you might be wondering about this over here on the right where it says 20 out of 20. It also works in this way. Remember when I said that these numbers add together? This 20 that's positive adds to this negative here. Well, that number is still negative if you catch my drift. So therefore, this number on this side is technically a zero and the number on this side is technically a zero as well. This means that you now have the chance that you would have before, like for example when you first start mutating, of getting the mutation on either side. And the best way to show this is to take this, this 20 male mutation and bring him up here. 
Now turn him on enable mating and have him breed with all of your base females. This is for everyone who wants to go past 20 mutations. If your desire is to go to the maximum with 127 mutations in melee damage in this stat, this is how you do this. So I'll show you how to get the next like two mutations. I'm not going to go up to 127 mutations doing this process because this is basically the same step as before. But we're gonna let this melee 20 breed up with all of these base females here and I'll collect the eggs and show you what I get. And the baby Rex that we need to look for will be a level 287 with melee damage that is greater than 631. And there we go. I know immediately by looking at this with the tech binoculars that this is actually the mutation that I need and it is on a male. But I will go ahead and I'll claim it and I will show you exactly what I'm talking about. First and foremost, let's look at the melee damage. It's 641, or sorry, 643.3 and that is much greater than the father's. So this stat has increased. So Let's look at the ancestors as well, just to show you what that is starting to look like. And you'll now notice that the 20 over 20 is gone, and instead it is now being replaced by that negative value here. So this is also an interesting thing to point out, is you kind of need to know where you are at with your mutations. So this is the point in the game where you definitely will need a tech calculator, uh, a stack calculator, or the tech binoculars to tell you how many mutations that you have. By looking at the 42, again, I know that that is 21 because that number is always doubled for the for the mutations that stat value right there. So this is our 21. So here's what you want to do. You want to go ahead and cryo him up and let him raise up outside. But first things first, we're going to go to options, change name. Melee 21 male. Now, if you are curious, I went through about 254 eggs to get this particular mutation. And that seems about average of what I was getting before when I was below the 20 mutation counter. My melee number 21 has grown up, so it is time to get this breeding with all of the base females up there. So I just want to remind everybody that this process is definitely rinse and repeat. And you do this all the way up to if you want to get your full 127 mutations. So this 287 is going to breed with all of the base females. And I want to remind you that I have not touched my base females. These are zero out of zero on their ancestors. The only thing that will change are your males, of course. But I will show you the next one because we're looking for a 289 with melee damage that is greater than 643. 289. And that is my next melee mutation. It is on a female, but this is number 22. So at 655 at birth, yeah, this is this is definitely fast. So just to give you guys a bit of understanding, this was exactly 120 eggs that I threw out. So this is coming by just as rapid as it was before. So when I go to show ancestors, again, you will notice that you have the negative number this side. And there's one on this side because it did actually pull the mutation from the mother. But we do know that this is... 22 mutations in melee. So I'm going to go and rename this. And if you do get it on a female, like I did here, all you have to do is allow this to raise up. And then you breed this with your base male out there to just convert it over to a male with the, exa the same exact level.
Once that melee has grown up, you just continue that process with breeding. It's pretty much the same as before, and it's entirely up to you how many times that you wish to mutate. But I will say this, if you choose to do the negative line, then it's a good idea to just keep mutating because it's not going to hurt you. You're just going to have some really overpowered dinos in the game. But that's pretty much everything that I know about negative mutations. Now on to color. So as you start breeding, you'll notice that you get mutations and there will be colors that are tied to them and some of the colors you might really, really like. So this is a point to say, keep any colors that you do like because if you want to create a dino at the end that has all of the cool colors that you've seen, you can do that. So I would recommend that you start collecting and saving them as soon as you get them. And it's a good idea that when you do get them, you call them for what they are. So for example, because this one is a magenta color on the body, I will call this one magenta color body. And I can keep this and save it to the side. And any cool colors that I do get, I will collect those and wait till the end when I'm done mutating. So those are some of the colors that I got there, and I compiled all of the ones that I wanted to put onto a final base, and these are the ones that I have. I have a green spine on the back with a green belly and a blue body. I think that would look pretty cool. Now I want to point out that these are not all the color regions for a Rex, and I'm just showing you three color regions to put together just to show you how it works. But again, the more color regions that you decide to put together, the more challenging it's going to be because again, you have to pull the colors. And then once you're done pulling the colors, you gotta put it onto the stats. But first things first, when you do have your colors ready to go and you wanna combine them together, you wanna first by putting your colors on the same racks. So I'm just gonna put these on breeding. And the first thing that I will do is because I have three available here is I will breed this girl green belly with this boy green spine. These two will have a baby and I need to make sure that I pull the color region from the spine and the belly onto a baby that ideally is a girl so that I can breed it with this blue body here. And there we go. This Rex is a female and it has the color region for the spine and on the belly. Now that this one's matured, we can go ahead and start mating the blue body with the combined green colors over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and claim this one here. And I'm gonna call it male colors. So now that this one has grown up, we can now convert these colors onto the good stats. Remember that these are the boss breeders over here, and ideally you want to do this on your final boss breeder. Like this does not have any of the good stats, but we could put it onto there by breeding it off with the boss breeder female because this one was a male. I wanted ideally to have this one on a girl and a boy because you could basically put out multiple different colored females to make it so much easier to get your final color onto the boss breeder. But doing it with one is fine. It will just take a while because you have to consider now that not only are we pulling all of the colors from the male over here, but we also have to pull the good stats. It is also a good thing to mention here is that you can do steps similarly how you would work for getting your base dino. You can do steps like, hey, this one has a couple of the colors and it has both of the stats. And then in that case, you would then breed it off with the color over there to pull the final colors. But I will go ahead and skip forward a bit until I get some eggs off of these to hatch out to see what we get. So this is a female, level 318. She has the mutations from the health that you can see next to the 39 base points that it has for health up at the top. And then if we look at the melee damage, she not only has the base points, the 46 base points, but she also has the 40 mutations that I had on the boss breeders at the time of breeding them. So this is good. She has all of the color regions with the exception of one. So I'm going to go ahead and claim her. And I'm going to call it stats almost color. I will cryo her up and let her raise outdoors. So now that she's raised up, 
she can now mate with the male that's over here. She's actually missing two colors, which isn't bad, but now we have a better chance of pulling all of the stats and the colors onto the boss breeder. So again, she has the mutations in health and the mutations in melee damage, whereas he doesn't, he's just the colors. So the baby that we get from then could be our potential final boss breeder with colors. So here I have two three two fives, and you'll also notice that there's a couple of higher level ones in here as well, like three two sevens. Now those three two sevens do have an extra mutation on top of those. So for example, this one actually has it in stamina. I'm going to ignore that and I'm just gonna specifically pull the stats that I want, which is the health and the melee damage. If you want to claim some of the other ones, it's entirely up to you. But this one here happens to be a female. It has all of the colors as well as the mutations from both health and melee damage. And there happens to be a twin here, which is another female as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and claim these two females as my color boss breeders. So I have two of these. Now all I have to do is get a male so that I can get disposable uh, brexes with the colors on. And there is my male boss breeder with colors. I want to point out the colors are not necessary, however, they do give your dinos a bit of flair and makes your creature a bit more customizable to your liking. So this does take a while. In my argument, colors can take even longer than getting mutations, but again, it all comes down to how many colors you're working with and pulling. There is one creature in this game that does use colors and the stats, and that is the Rhino. If you remember, you do need a host dino. The more mutations that you have in the stat and the more drag weight of that creature, it can pull those stats much greater, but also it will pull the colors from the host as well. So having a pretty looking dino can be beneficial for you in the long run. Before I end the video, I would like to address anyone who plays on a rented unofficial server. On my own server, we have had an issue with two things with breeding. The first is that we have noticed that the timers for gestation will not sync together. The second biggest issue is that aquatic dinos are impossible to breed, and this is due to the skeletal mesh update that was implemented. So if you are breeding aquatic dinos and they are not needed, when you go to harvest the bodies, you won't be able to no matter what you do, and instead you will have to wait for the decomposition timer to clear them. This is something that seems to only affect people who play on unofficial servers with boosted rates. This is annoying and has been an issue now for months in the game. If this gets updated, I will pin a message below letting you guys know if this gets fixed. Lastly, a very big thank you to Tyrant King and Sam, who were an enormous help with this video. You guys are the best. And hey, if this video was helpful for you, please consider liking and subscribing. For all of you out there, happy breeding and take care.